Hi, my name is Steve Maruzzi. We're here with Ken Resnick at Rath Associates. Uh, this video is intended to show how to remove the blower and burner on the Mascot FT. Uh, you will need to isolate the gas, shut off gas to the boiler, remove electricity for this repair. We've already removed the two Phillips head screws on the top, two Phillips head screws on the bottom, and we'll remove the cover. Removal of the blower assembly requires removal of fresh air inlet boot that's held on with a clamp. You can slide that clamp down the rubber boot and remove that boot and get it out of your way. Removal of the gas train is also necessary. And underneath that aluminum tubing of the gas train you're going to find two cardboard gaskets. Orientation of those gaskets is not important. They can go either way. Replacement of those gaskets are necessary after inspection of them if you should see that they're uh, cut or torn or spread. Furthermore, removal of the high limit for the burner assembly. Two wires. The orientation of these wires is unimportant. What we're showing here is the 140 burner plate that will come out. Uh, currently the boiler we're working on is a 199. Um, however, there is a burner overheat sensor right here uh, that does not have to come off. The two screws do not have to come out on the 199. On the smaller sizes they do. Why? Because that comes right down through to the top plate. And if you take out all of the nuts to hold the burner in position, if you remove those nuts, you still also on the smaller size need to remove the two Phillips head screws for the burner limit. Removal of the electrical connector for the blower motor. Also a lock squeeze pull down and you can see the lock there on that Molex connector. And you can move that wiring out of your way. One of two tools necessary. One can be a small ratchet what you're seeing there is a quarter inch ratchet with a Phillips head adapter on it or a very small stubby Phillips head screwdriver. Loosening of the four screws that hold the blower plate down onto the boiler itself. Two screws in the front, two screws in the back can be accessed either with that Phillips head screwdriver or the Phillips head attachment on the ratchet. So Ken is removing on the 199 the blower and plate all is one. On the smaller size boilers such as the 140, uh, the headroom you will not be able to get the blower and plate all out as one. So you will have to remove the blower from the arm which entails, point out the four nuts, which entails now removal of the four 10 millimeter nuts two up top and two on the bottom. Then taking the blower out and then separately removing the arm. But in this example this is a 199 combination. He'll pull all of it out in one piece. During removal of the blower in one piece you will notice that brass orifice. That is your gas orifice. That orifice can come out very easily be careful that it doesn't fall onto the floor. You do need that back in place during reassembly. And again, this is a 199. It has a small orifice. The 140 in smaller boilers will have a threaded orifice into a plastic housing. Be careful that you don't break that if you're trying to tighten that. On the 140, you do not need to remove the orifice from the Venturi. Now I want to mention to you a lot of times contractors are not cleaning their PVC shavings or PVC pipe uh, when installing the uh, combustion air intake. Uh, where does that end up? Well that comes down our combustion air boot through the blower and the top of the burner. Ken will pull the burner and then we'll get a look at that. But that will plug up your burner. Uh, and this is a good example. Here you're seeing removal of the very large gasket that acts as the um, combustion gasket on the top of the burner assembly. Inspect that gasket, inspect it for cracks, crimps, flattening out 
if need be, replace that gasket before reassembly. And that gasket has to be in position correctly or you could get potential gas leak in the cabinet. Removal of the burner plate is best done with a small screwdriver. You'll notice that there is a notch in the very front of that burner plate. Insertion of the screwdriver into that notch and you can lift the burner plate out of position from the top of the boiler. Here you're seeing those PVC shavings that Steve mentioned earlier. So here are some that are not burnt off and here are some that started to melt and burn off and what happens is they will actually plug these orifice holes and you won't get proper firing. After visual inspection of the heat exchanger and cleaning if necessary, reassembly of that burner plate on top of the heat exchanger is now going to happen. Be careful and do not give in to the temptation to touch that ceramic glass portion of the burner plate. It is very, very fragile. Cleaning the top of the burner plate off as necessary and reinstallation. Burner plate sits down up on top of the heat exchanger, again assuring that that notch is facing forward. Installation of the gasket. After inspection of that gasket and replacement if necessary, make sure that gasket, as was said before, is in its proper place. And we can now go ahead and put the burner housing back together. Reversing our steps and reinstalling the burner housing itself, please keep in mind that orifice. So I find it best to just hold the orifice in place while getting the housing back on to the top of the heat exchanger. This is showing the 140 blower with the orifice on the 140. This threads into position, um, so you do not have to remove that for removal of the burner plate. However, if you are putting a new orifice in or checking it, uh, just make sure it's snug. Don't tighten down too much or you'll crack the plastic venturi your mixing station. If you have any technical questions, please contact Product Support at 1-800-900-9276. Thank you.